Welcome one and all to the home opener here in Platt Arena as the Foresters of Huntington take on the Wright State Lake Raiders. This is Noah Tobias joined with Ryan Lockhart. Wright State comes into this contest two and one and both of those wins came up against the Blue Lights College. The Foresters went one and oh as they were able to pull out a victory over Concordia this, this past Saturday. Ryan, the Foresters graduated Mike Bush Devin Murder and Trevor Lockwood, but got some amazing freshmen uh, and also a transfer senior from Florida. Uh, who's made, who is, has got to make an impact this year to make this season a great overall? Yeah, I think, first of all, Noah, the guys we lost, those were all big parts of, you know, our offense and just our team aspect. Kyle Platt, another guy we lost in that. But Noah, you kind of look at who's coming back and new freshmen in that. Zach Owens is a guy, I've seen him in the gym quite a bit over the offseason, Noah. He looks like he's going to and I think Zach's going to be ready to take the challenge of the season. And a starting role tonight, Noah, another guy I really like, the freshman Caleb Middlesworth. Middlesworth, a freshman that went to Oak Hill, currently a state championship ring, Noah. So that just shows you, along with a couple other guys on our team, the championship mentality these freshmen are, the freshmen are bringing to the squad. Yeah, definitely. Caleb Middlesworth, uh, along with David Ahrens and Spencer Ballinger, he, uh, all three of those guys are from uh, Oak Hill, and so they graduated together. All three of them are freshmen, so it's going to be great to see, you know, what they do here for the four foresters for the next uh, four years. But actually, this is redshirting, so we won't see any this year. But kind of going over to Wright State, Byron Taylor for the Raiders is coming off of a 35-point game. And in the first game, he had 15 points. I know that he starts on the bench, but he's going to need to be the that Wright State needs. Uh, they, they need if they really want to get a victory uh, over the Foresters tonight, Ryan. Yeah, no, when I was kind of looking at a couple different guys, I saw he had 35 off the bench. And at first I was like, you know, why don't you have a guy like that starting? But if you can provide a spark off the bench like that for a team, that's huge, and that's an impact. Maybe we see him get a lot more minutes tonight because that 35-point game was his last one, so we'll have to keep our eyes dotted on him tonight. And Antonio McQueen is also averaging 22 points a game. Uh, you know, he's a 6'6 freshman, but, you know, what do you think of the big man? Yeah, I think McQueen's doing a really good job so far this year, No, You mentioned the 22 points a game, has 28 points in one particular game, shoots six percent from the field so I think he's going to be a big key tonight and he's going to have to be a guy for Wright State we're going to have to keep our eyes on. Yeah definitely and for HU I wasn't necessarily sure about signing a transfer senior but honestly Nick May he did I'm sorry Nick Macon he's making quite a bit of an impact so far in their last game versus Concordia Nick May Nick Macon good goodness gracious Macon he uh, nice Contest, but also Connor Platt, he also had 19 points there. So, do you think one of them have to be up really this year to, again to have a better season? Short answer, no. Both of them are going to have to step up. I you like mentioned that. in the transfer, Macon, he's not no scrub by no means. No, Mike Bush in the league last year, which started an 87 assist, I believe it was. Macon was 10th on that list with 183. So, Macon's going to be a guy. Maybe not exactly the same as Mike Bush was, but I think he can provide as close as we're going to get to it. And you mentioned Connor Platno. If you flash back to fresh, his first, which was two seasons ago, Connor had 38 points in that game and tied the record for threes. You know who that was against? Fun fact, Wright State Lake, Noah. Yeah, and it's going to be a great season here, at home opener here. We got Halloween uh, costume contest tonight for the students, and it's just going to be a fun one because basketball is back. So for Ryan Lockhart, this is Noah Tobias, and we will be right back with you. What does it mean to impact your community? As a broadcast media major at Huntington University, you'll explore that question and uncover the heart of storytelling. Tell real life stories of the world around you from day one and uncover why it matters to the campus, community, and beyond. It could be in our live TV studio through our award-winning newscast, broadcasting home athletic events 
or running HU's very own radio station. You'll have the opportunity to use industry standard equipment from 4K cameras to instant replay to better prepare you for a future career. In addition to foundational courses, you'll have the chance to specialize in church media, corporate media, news, or marketing and sales. Or spend your last summer interning in one of America's largest cities, Phoenix, Arizona. In this one-of-a-kind opportunity, you'll have a home base at Huntington University's Arizona Center for Digital Media as you launch into professional opportunities catered toward your area of interest and enjoy the sunshine in the process. Your professional network begins as soon as you become a forester. Broadcast media majors at HU have a long-standing history of success in the job market. You'll be connected with alumni who have gone before you, not to mention all of your professors have industry experience. You've been given a gift. Why not use it to impact your world for Christ? Huntington University Broadcast Media. Real life stories, real world experiences. Impact your community. Everything has a beginning. A moment where a dream becomes an idea and an idea a creation. Cutting edge creators are engaging in the ever changing medium of digital media. But one thing never changes and that's story. We are storytellers. Whether it's on set, in the lab, or in the field, we are always looking to understand the heart of society and explore the depths of human nature. The goal is to make captivating, moving narratives that the world will want to view and cherish. But the journey to that goal is vital. Where you learn and how you learn makes all the difference. Every great movie or broadcast has a creative body working behind it. And those artists and technicians had to learn had to start somewhere. They needed a place to tap into their passions and train in their craft. Digital media is a living, breathing thing, consisting of a network of moving parts. Different skills are necessary for a healthy creative body. Some skills you may not have even heard of yet. And without each of those individual breathing parts, we would look and sound a whole lot like this. We need you. In Huntington University's Digital Media Arts Department, you get your hands on equipment from day one. You don't have to wait a few years to get in the studio or get on a set. In your first year, in your first semester, you'll work in supporting roles on underclassmen projects and even get to develop your own stories. So, you want to operate the red? We can do that. Want to learn how to use a Cintiq? We got you covered. How about Anchor in a live TV studio? Yeah, we got one of those too. You may not have a clear plan in mind or may not know what your interests are yet, but your years at Huntington are time for self-discovery and to embrace your passions. One thing's for sure, the professors are always a source of encouragement and ongoing advice, who more than anything want to see you succeed and grow in those passions. You may be missing home, but rest assured, you always have a family to turn to in this department. Not only does the program grow your technical and artistic side, but it also pushes you to seek truth and grow in your walk with Christ. The power of story itself derives from Jesus. Our artistic skills and visions can be a most meaningful form of worship. The real world starts before that diploma is handed to you. You have opportunities to build up your demo reels, travel for your craft, and work with clients. We prepare you for a life in LA if you choose, possibly a career at DreamWorks, or maybe you work for a professional sports network. Our students are putting out good work and showcasing it to the world. We attend a number of conferences, festivals, and competitions each year. I'll let our awards speak for themselves. And get this, 93% of our graduates are working or in grad school. So this goes out to all the storytellers, dreamers, and artists out there looking for a place to call home the next four years while honing their creative minds and skills. So what do you say? Are you in? It's on the... Ah! He made it! Oh my God! Hello and welcome back here inside Pl Arena. Noah, starting lineups, first of all, for the visiting Lakers. Number two at guard was Az Herden. He's a freshman, 5'10. Number three, a forward, Antonio McQueen, also a freshman. He'll start as well for the Lakers. Number five, guard Elijah Woods, a junior, be in the lineup as well. Number 22, Patrick McClellan. Sophomore, he will be in the lineup as well. And rounding out the five, Noah, number one, will be in the lineup as well. 
Or do the four like mope? No way you can just feel the atmosphere and how electric it's gonna be in Platte Arena tonight. Yeah, this is gonna be a really exciting season for the Foresters. Starting out for the Foresters will be number one, Zach Owens. Zach Owens is a 5'11 sophomore, 160 pounds out of Anderson, Indiana. Graduated from Crispus uh, Addis High School. And also for the Foresters, senior number two, Nick Macon. He is a senior guard, feet, 180 pounds out of Madison, Indiana. Graduated from Madison High School, uh, but he actually uh, was in Florida for the past three years. But now, Another guard for the Foresters, number three, Connor Platt. He's a junior, 6'2 uh, guard out of Huntington, Indiana. Really has had a great couple of years here. Ryan is looking to make another one out of it. And number four, Colesworth forward freshman, 200 pounds out of Marion, Indiana. He is one of those three that graduated from Oak Hill. And then the lineup is number 44, Tyler Aaron, junior forward, 6'8", 30 pounds. All muscle, Ryan, from Sweetster, uh, yeah, Sweetster, Indiana, and graduated from Muncie Central High School. Noah, I don't know about you, but I'm excited for this one. Give me one player for the Forcers you're looking at tonight. Really, I'm for Tyler Aaron's here tonight. I think I really want to uh, do well outside. He is from the outside. Also. Side, I, I'm interested to see how well he's kind of shaped up his game even more over the summer. But Connor Platt, uh, we you know we did talk about him a little earlier. And he's had such a great couple of years, and I just wish the best because I mean he deserves to have another great season. It's where he's this gym, it's absolutely unbelievable that he ha hasn't averaged 25 points a game yet. Yeah, I oh no. Right, State will come out of green. He's the Forcers. I believe we can say that all of green that Huntington's wearing. Yeah. New jerseys for us this year, new season, expectations. Very, very true. It's Tyler Aarons versus Antonio McQueen for the jump, and Aaron wins it. And that's gonna be an over back violation committed by number four, Millsworth. And uh, officials are actually gonna have I talk about this. And Noah, what way, what better way to start out a season than to have a little bit of controversy right off the tip? <laughs> and so here we go. It's actually for Middlesworth. Almost got a little ahead of himself there, giving it to Macon. But actually, uh, Middlesworth, he was straddling the half court. But that's all right. Macon with the basketball, getting it over to Owens on the right side of the court. Pick and roll, but couldn't get, wasn't even looking for Aaron's. Middlesworth now over to make it. Senior trying to make an impact here early on here at home. Bad pass to Aaron's. And now we got 22 McClendon going up for an easy layup. And that gets it started here in Platte Arena for the season. Yeah, McClendon steal Aaron really out of the gates there for the Lakers. Connor Platt down to Middlesworth. Great cut by Zach Owens. Couldn't handle the pass. He still shoots it. No good. And rebounded by McQueen. McLean with the basketball for the Raiders. Cross court pass to number five, Woods. Couldn't get that one to go, though. Middlesworth gets his. Macon cutting to the inside. Goes up and gets it home. Yeah, Macon a nice attempt there. I took McQueen almost one on one there, Noah. A good early look by him. Yeah, and I really wasn't sure how that was going to work out for him because McQueen, I mean, he was just over top of him, but I don't know if he just didn't correctly or what. His Woods gives it over to Harden, and that three is good. Five to the score. And that's a deep three there, Noah. I think if you're the Forcers, you almost allow that one. Making down to Aaron's. A little bit of a mismatch. Aaron's fake and goes up for two, and that's good. Four to five now. Tyler Aaron's may have the best footwork in our conference, Noah. 
really like him down on the inside. Well, I wasn't sure if Makem was actually going to get it down to him or not. That rebound is by Owen. Owens will take it up himself. He actually had a decent year as a freshman last year. Middlesworth now going in for two. Couldn't get that in. Rebound, basket by Middlesworth. Yeah, great job by the to follow his own shot. Cut right down the middle of the lane and get an easy bucket there. 23. He pulls up for a three. No good. Rebounded by Connor Platt. Connor Platt, honestly, he can play either two uh, guard spot or guard spot. Tyler Aaron's now. Nine to five is the score. 13 30 going half. That's another basket by the Raiders. Really, Forsters play a little bit of defense. I think, you know, Wright State, they're coming in. That. They have nothing to lose right now, especially with the beginning of the season. Connor, three, no good. Rebounded by. Yeah, maybe a four shot attempt there by Platt on that three, but we saw. One's another one. That one's good. One Harden for the Lakers, Noah. Yeah, Harden's got six now. Middlesworth with the basketball. No good. And rebounds by Harden now. Forcers trying to push it there. Harden goes in the inside. And that'll be a foul on the fourth. On the fourth. Up against number two. And that is his first foul. And first foul committed in the uniform. And Games first as well. No viewers at home, I know you see a couple of different camera angles. We're doing a couple of different things this season on FDN Sports, so stay with us and tell us how you like it so far. Season. Big between McQueen and Macon, but nice pass over to uh, Oz, number 23. 12 to 9, right here in Platt Arena. Connor Platt with the bat right side. Now to swings it over to Middlesworth. He takes a no good. That's going to be an offensive on Owens. Just position there, kind of a bit of a push in the back to number 22, McClendon. Maybe one easier season on that. Yeah, I agree. Again, 9 to 12 with 16, 15 seconds remaining in the first half. And it's been a good one so far. Firsters, and the right stake. They really need to uh, a lot of contest, contested shots there as and misses the three, rebounded by McQueen. McClendon, though, nice pass over to Smith, and that's good. I'm sorry, that was actually Woods for three. And this lead goes from 15 to uh, the lead is now to nine. No, for sure. 15 to 9 right now. You just mentioned it. How do you think they're playing up to this point? We know kind of a fast start right now. Yeah, really, the four, they just need to play better defense. That is just really tough. Uh, I mean, they're really right stake. They're doing a great job from the three point. Uh, they are actually shooting 50% right now, three of six early on. Huntington, they have only attempted three three-point baskets. They are one for three, but uh, and they're four for nine from the field. So uh, that's not so again. A couple of those were just kind of little bunnies that they missed. Yeah, maybe a couple of early four shots there, but the late kind of putting on a half-court defense. Nick making with the basket. You know, to Connor Platt. Jumper, and that's good. And Connor makes that one look relatively easy, like he's going to do all season long there. Another three pointer here, and that one's good as well. No, the Lakers came to play today with the Forcers up 18 to 11 right now. McClendon, number 22, seven points. Zach inside, out to Middles. And rebounded by pass out to. Kind of resetting it. Owens back. Go to Aaron's now. Aaron spins this up. And fouled by number 23, Tyrone Ozing. It's going to be his first foul and team's first. And be a timeout. 
We will be right back here for FDN Sports 11 and later. Welcome back to the 18 Forcers trail the Lakers. Really both defense right and great job from that three point. Huh? Yeah, right safe a phenomenal job from deep. you mentioned they were 50% from deep. Doing a good job of getting some ball quick and getting Quick up 10 offense going in. Now the Forcers don't have an answer. For Head coach Ty Platt take a timeout, then the media timeout. We'll have to see if maybe a couple or maybe adjustments will help here. And Tyler Aaron's number 44 for the Forcers at the line shooting two. And I don't think he's lost his touch at all since last season. Yeah, after that one, no. Season that makes Aaron's a perfect five for five from the free throw line. So we'll see how long he can keep it perfect. Hopefully, I'm not jinxing it here. And who a breath of relief from me. <laughs> He's got seven points now in this contest. Score 13 to 18 with a little under 50. 22 McClendon for the Lakers going inside. Kind of a lazy pass. He jumped. He really, he didn't need to jump up. Harden now with the basketball for the Lakers. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Inside the 23, Ozan. And the big man, McQueen, gets it done for him. Yeah, Middlesbrough just lost McQueen running down the baseline there. Early mistake by the freshman. Still no game yet. Zach Owens now. Three-point basket is good. 16 to 20, and definitely a relief. 22, McClendon. And now number two, Harden, with the basketball, covered, covered closely by Zach Owen. He's going to just take it inside, back out to Ozan, and that three basket is good. The yeah, Lakers hot from deep right now. That makes them seven, or excuse me, six of eight, Noah. Yeah, really, they just need to keep shooting if they're going to stay hot like that. But Connor Platt has something to say about that. Yeah, Connor will take his points in silence all season long, but very effective. And really, number three, McQueen and Tyler Ahrens, they're battling out inside as McQueen wasn't able to get that basket to go. Zach Owens goes inside, and a foul will be called on number three, McQueen. That is his first, team second, and actually... You know, getting McQueen in foul trouble would not be such a bad thing. Yeah, no, at 6'6", six, six, he's one of their two tallest guys on the roster, the other one being 6'7". But, you know, height's a thing. The Forcers, we have our side. We have Middlesworth. Wyatt's also back. Wyatt Hughes, that is. So, you know, Noah's size is relatively on our side. Yeah, and I think, you know, later on in the season, it's going to be pretty tough to uh, compete with because, you know, I believe this year they have two seven footers. Uh, that is just something that, you know, that's just like a different height that we don't have. So it'll be interesting later on in the season, once we really get into the thick of conference play, how we're going to be able to compete against those, uh, those gentlemen. Number two, Harden. Easy breakaway. There. Lead goes to 27 to 19 with a little under 13 minutes left to play. Zach Owens with the basketball. Spin move going inside. Pass out to Mitchell. Could have shot, but decided not to. He's going to go baseline. And just a lot of movement with the basketball making was just there. I mean, really not necessary. And so it, the pass out 
spots out of bounds. But now, for the Foresters, making his first home appearance is number zero, Peyton West. He's a freshman guard out of Muncie, Indiana. Graduated from Wapahani High School. And pass goes uh, off uh, McClendon's leg there. West almost gets, uh, almost steals the ball. Harden now. Been hot tonight from three. He goes and and misses it. And looked like uh, it's worth just kind of <laughs> went up against number 22 McClendon's hand. So that was kind of a turn of events. But number zero Byron, he checks in for the Lakers. Chas Painter. Yeah, Painter. I for this Lakers squad I was talking about, Noah. Painter 6'7", McQueen 6'6". Six, six. Next to each other, they both fall to me. Yeah, with Middlesworth coming out there, that's, they're really trying to take advantage of that height difference because McQueen is now guarding Andrew Yoder. And Sutton also checked in for the Foresters. And that just kind of lowers our height even more. Tyler Aaron's going to work on Painter. Couldn't get that one to go, and Painter gets the rebound. Clinton passes it up to Taylor. Actually, we talked about Taylor a little bit the pregame. You know, he scored 35 points in his last at college. And, you know, it's just kind of interesting. It's going to be interesting how he, you know, follows up with that here tonight. And that foul goes up again. It's number 44. Tyler, his first personal team Again, just like we were talking about McQueen getting in foul trouble, it'd be interesting. It'd be really interesting what the Forsters lineup would be like without Tyler Aarons because of foul trouble. Yeah, we know Locke, the guy that kind of came in for him last year, Noah. Now is Wyatt the guy? Do you move Middlesworth over and maybe go with a smaller lineup? I think Coach Platt, we have a lot of depth this season, Noah, so I think we could see quite a few different lineups that a lot of different working together. Of our strengths this year is the depth we do have. Taylor made both of his free throws, so the lead goes to 10. Connor Platt for three, and that is good. Man, he has a hot hand. And the thing is, is he never lets up. When, when he's on fire, he calls for the ball every single time, which is great. But McQueen answers a come back. Yeah, McQueen gives him four tonight. Kind of slow off the start, but with Harden doing all this work right now, Noah, that's great for the force for the Lake. 22 McClendon with the basketball. Taylor, Taylor up against West, and a lot of footwork there by West. Again, goes inside, and a foul will be called on West. There were a lot of foot to Byron Taylor, but I think they were just calling that there. Different contacts, so shoving. So it was just kind of awesome. But Zach Owens now comes back in the game, and that's going to be a full timeout. And we will take a break right along. Again, full timeout. Score 31 to 22. We'll be back. Welcome back here inside Platt Arena. Forcer fans, your Forcers currently down 1 to 22. But no, we've seen the Lakers run a tempo. Forcers haven't been able to make adjustments. No, what's one adjustment you would have? Well, really, for the Foresters, kind of looking back at last game, 
only five players that scored, and that was the starting five. So far, again, that's all who scored here tonight uh, so far. I'm interested to see if Peyton West, Jay, uh, or Andrew Yoder, I guess Andrew's not out there anymore, but still, uh, they need to be playmakers. They need to make decisions. I know it's early in the season, but really, they need to make a bigger impact than what they're making right now. You know, because we're talking about more of the depth we have on this team this year. Start showing that depth just a little bit more, I'm saying, Ryan. Yeah, and Painter. Big mismatch inside Noah. Painter taking it right to Zach Owens. If you're Zach Owens, there's not much to do right there. Zach Owens taking the ball up to Foresters. Screen set by Owens goes to the inside, layup, and that's good. That's a great Ooh. little Euro step by Zach Owens. That is nice, Noah, and that's some of the work in the offseason we're talking about. Jaden Sutton there, guarding closely to Harden. Outside Painter with the basketball, pass it over to Taylor. Harden setting up an offense. Just toss McQueen. McQueen goes up for two, no good. Tip and rebounded by but it is off Painter. Goes out of bounds. So Forster ball. Checking in for the Forsters is number four, Caleb. Checking in West. So there's a little bit more height. There. You know, and we went quite a few minutes with that height on our advantage. So it'll be nice to see how the Forsters can deal with it. Yeah, it didn't really go down more points already. Where Connor Platt. Couldn't make that one, but Middlesworth was there to clean it all. And what better way to speak than right there? That's Middlesworth right into the game. Immediate impact. Number two, Harden with the basketball. Again, guarded by Sutton. McQueen now going up against Middlesworth. Going straight into him. Back out to Harden for three, and no good. Rebounded by Middlesworth. Sutton really pushing it. Does not have numbers. Gets down to Aaron's now. And that's going to be a violation by Aaron. So there's another turnover for the Foresters as number four, Ahmad Smith, checks in for number two, Chez Harden. No, that's almost got to be a relief for a Forster fan because Harden, you know, before a couple of those key timeouts the Foresters called, he was lighting up the Foresters' defense. Yeah, another substitution that happened there at that last time, one, Taj Benton. But number zero, Taylor. Couldn't make that three-point basket. Sutton goes inside. Man, that layup is good. I don't know about you, Ryan, but I was not expecting that. Wow, Sutton was almost immediately shot out of a cannon on that fast break, Noah. The bench is already doing better than they were in that last That's for sure. Tyler Aarons with the giving it off to Connor Platt. Three on three. Four on three now. Zach the basketball. Then and foul. That foul goes up against number Taj Benton. That is going to be a foul on top first. And, and you know, Noah, that's a take. That's a take by Zach Owens. I really like because last year we might have seen him pull that one up or kick it over to Owens. You know, driving inside and getting one of what we hope to be two layups, two free throws. But that's just that off-season development that happened that I think is really going to help out Zach's game. Zach Owens with six points, and now seven points on the game. 30 to 35, Foresters really trying to fight back right here, and it's great to see that as number one now with the basketball going towards the nice pass to McQueen. McQueen and his foul tried to try right there, but was unable to finish it. Now be against Aaron. That's second. Personal foul and team's fifth. Yeah, no, Aaron's going up on that one. And we know Aaron's is a guy that likes to go up for the box, had three in their last game. Foul trouble is the thing that the Forsters cannot afford as much as they could last season. I'm telling you what, Ryan. Antonio McQueen does not look like a freshman. He looks a lot more comfortable out there than, I mean, I've never seen a freshman look out there than he does right now. Tyler Aarons with the basketball. 
Cross court pass to Sutton. He drives to the inside. Uh, that was a good idea to pass it out to Middlesworth, but that pass is actually tipped out by 20 Ozan. And now another fresh check in for the Foresters to be number 23, Spencer Ballinger. Ballinger, excuse me. No, it's the first game of the I think we're with a few <laughs> mistakes. Just a few, though. You're going to have to cut me some slack. Making now. Step back. And that's good wow. from the. Tosh Benton now trying to push it up there. Gets off to Ozan. Step back. And now he's going to put it right in there to number four, Smith. That's about as easy of a basket as. A great job to really see where the defense was and just to thread the needle a little bit. Ballinger with the basketball, getting it down to his teammate. And for the past five years now. Worth it. And he makes that one look easy. Yeah, they'll make it a couple more years, Noah, and maybe if that can stay, we'll see how the Oak Hill boys will do here for the Foresters. Yeah. They can really get that down at the college level because it's different. It's much different from the high school level to the college level. As number zero, Byron Taylor able to knock that three-point basket down. And really, that's the Byron Taylor we've seen on the stat sheet. The threes score is 41-34 now with under seven minutes to go. Macon with the basketball. Hands it off to Ballinger. Zach Owens, pull up three, no good. Rebounded by four Smith. Stolen by Ballinger though. And again, almost stolen away by Taylor. Macon basketball. Nice. Now Ballinger. Wins now. Turn around, jump shot, no good. Rebounded by Middlesworth, and that two point basket is good. And that's a foul. This is going to be a big attempt here for Middlesworth. No, what a great job there. And offensively on the boards, Middlesworth is huge and a key factor for the Foresters right now. Yeah, Middlesworth has seven so far. Platt checks in for the Foresters, and number 22, McClendon, is back in for the Lakers. Yeah, Middlesworth, another guy that's perfect in the season so far from the free throw line. And I, I believe he was a pretty good free throw shooter in high school as well. I shot about 80% from the free throw line, and honestly, that's the key that the Foresters need. That's a great knockaway pass by Ballinger. A great job by Taj Benton to come back with that. Layup of his own. Over to Zach Owens on the right side of the court. Now to Connor Platt. He drives baseline. And that's Connor Platt's bread and butter. He loves jump shot. When he's here in the gym, I swear he practices that every single time. Benton not able to make that three. Get rebounded by Connor Platt. Picked up his dribble, gets over to Owens, giving it down to the big cup by Platt, and that is good. What a touch Connor Platt having over number 23, Ozan. And that is going to be a media full timeout, and so we will take it along with the teams. 43, Foresters down by two with five minutes, 30 seconds left. We will be right back. Welcome back here inside Platt Arena. You know, the Forcers right now looking like they're making a big comeback here, looking to take the lead before halftime. And I think part of it is just smarter by the Forcers. You know, at first it seemed like they were just taking some unnecessary shots, some unnecessary turnovers. Half five and a half to zero from Wright State. 
So no, we'll see how that's gonna play down with five and a half minutes left in this game here. Connor Platt leading all scores with 12 points. Now, 41 to 43. Ball recovered by Ballinger, gets it up to Macon. And Macon loses the ball. And a foul will be called on Ballinger. And actually, I, I'm, I'm fine with that foul. Really, I am, because that would have been a breakaway layup. And an easy two points that really, uh, yeah, that just, that just would not have been good for the Foresters. So 41-43, Benton now going inside, and there's another turnover, but by the Lakers. So far, the Foresters have five turnovers, and actually, that is Wright State's first turnover in this ball game. But honestly, this season, like for how early it is, with the Foresters only having five turnovers to this point, not horrible. By the end of the season, you want to have it probably where Wright State has it like right now. Yeah, the Foresters had 17 in their last game. Ballinger not able to get that shot to go. Well, you know, you hope the Foresters can keep those numbers down on the turnovers. Clinton for a three, no good. Rebounded by Owens. Owens takes it himself and could not finish it. Did not go up strong at all. And now McClendon, McClendon with the basketball going inside. Pass out to Woods. Woods for three and no good. Rebounded by Connor Platt. You know, no, what I really like from Connor Platt there, played really good defense, hand right in the man's face, and then went and chased down the rebound on that one. Tell me if you don't like that from a junior player on your squad, Noah. Oh, no, I love that. Definitely. Connor Platt now with the basketball on the left side of the court. Driving to the inside. Back out to Middlesworth. And that's a nice little jumper from the elbow by Middlesworth. He now has 11, so he's in the double digits. Yeah, Middlesworth and McQueen, both freshmen, and both do not look like freshmen for either team, Noah. Looking phenomenal right now. Middlesworth, McQueen has eight points. Excuse me, five points for the Lakers. Missed three-point basket by Woods, rebounded by the Foresters. The score is tied, 43 to 43. Three minutes, 29 seconds left to go here in half number one of the home opener. Connor Platt for a three, no good, and rebounded by 23, Ozan. Yeah, the Foresters able to get the score tied up once again. Oh, let's we'll see if they can now take it over, play some solid defense here and get something, still keep something going, excuse me, on offense. Harding going to be called with the traveling violation. There's turnover number two for the Lakers. And number four, Ahmad Smith going to check in for 22, Patrick McClendon. Number zero, Peyton West for your Forcers also checks in for Middlesworth. So the Forcers once again going with the smaller lineup. Noah, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like we have a potential three point guards on the floor right now. Oh, definitely, and that's a great job by Ballinger cleaning that up for Connor Platt. 45-43, the Forsters have the lead now. Five Woods with the basketball. Trying to alley-oop it to McQueen, and good job by Peyton West with the basketball. Nice pass in between a couple acres to Zach Owens, could not finish that layup though, but does draw a foul. That foul goes against number 23, Tyrone Ozan. And Noah, call me old fashioned, but I love the last pass there. Aiden West, we'll see a replay of it here. That's right after West passed the ball. But Noah, good job, Zach Owens taking that one to the hole. Couldn't get the shot to fall, but for his free throws. Couple substitutions for the Foresters. Number five, Jaden Sutton, and making his career debut. Actually, he did his home debut, I guess I should say, because Wyatt Hughes did play uh, last Saturday against Cornerstone. Didn't, but he did end up playing. But you know, you, you heard the Foresters kind of clapping, and you know, maybe some expectations for Wyatt. He was a guy coming in last year we thought was really going to help out the team. We were saddened by the news that his injury would be an all-season one. And number two, Chaz Harden went inside. Kind of had a little hesitation. Official calls the foul because of that. And number five, 
Jaden Sutton's going to pick up his first personal foul. Team and Harden just handle there. Maybe it just kind of got jammed up because you know, I'm guessing it got jammed up. A bunch of players there at the end of that. Does make his first one. Lead down to three for the Foresters. Harden still with eight in this ball game. Jaden Sutton for the Foresters with the basketball. Giving it over to Peyton West. Now to Owens. Screen set by Wyatt Hughes. Owens goes to the inside, and that is a good looking layup. And he's flexing a little bit right there, Ryan. Yeah, and I think if you're Zach Owens, you're allowed to have nine points. And in the last couple minutes, he's been phenomenal, Noah. Great job. Help defense by Peyton West. Coming over there by the big man. That was just a double clutch shot by number two, Harden. Zach Owens, though, with another layup. Ooh. Absolutely great Zach Owens, get forced, get Platt Arena to stand up. Oh, right there, young man. That's going to be a 30-second, but we'll stay right here. 51 to 44. Ryan, what has changed in the last five minutes? Forcers to get to the lead. No, we're going to like this, but the Forcers are scoring the basketball. They were struggling at the game. It looked like the basket had, you know, maybe something over the top of it. The Forcers just couldn't get anything to drop. But then, you know, a couple three-pointers start falling. You got a guy like uh, Zach Owen, 13 points right now, igniting Forcer Arena. Connor Platt also 12 points. He hit a couple key three-pointers. Forcers right now four deep. I think the biggest thing they're playing defense, Noah, as important as scoring the ball is, if you can't stop people from scoring, it's hard to do anything in a game. Well, unless you're the Golden State Warriors and Chicago Bulls from the other <laughs> night. Now, at the end of the first half of that game, the score was 93-50. to 50. Okay, first half. Now, I'm sorry. I am going to right now. That's, that's the first half. There had to have been no defense in that game. What for that? I don't know if we can even call it a game itself, <laughs> Noah. Travel call there for the Lakers. Another key turnover playing into the Forster's hand right now. Jaden Sutton now with the basketball, trying to drive it on up. Over to Wyatt Hughes for two, and that is good. Great job by Wyatt Hughes. And actually, friends off the court, so it's great to see that connection kind of on the court. Yeah, first career college point for Wyatt Hughes there, Noah. Congrats to him. Now Connor Platt will take it. He'll get the in one there. Big shot by Connor Platt. And he'll, get it he'll go to the line for one more. Wow. Let's wow. Go, let's go back to that steal really quick, okay? That steal by Zach Owen. Can I get one more wow in, please? He, he, was, he was going out of bounds. Like, he, he, he was in the air, going out of bounds, catches the ball, and throws it while in the air. And even saw, uh, even gave it up to Zach Owen, I'm sorry, gave it up to Peyton West. Peyton finds Connor. I mean, what a finish by Connor. 53 seconds left in the first half. Queen now goes up for two and gets that one to go. And draws a foul. Yeah, he'll quiet the forcers for just a moment. But that's what you expect from McQueen, Noah. He's their guy as a freshman is really... You know, kind of their leader and their point, you know, bucket getter, you can almost say. So McQueen, if he's going to get these Lakers back in the game, he's going to have to quiet this crowd and just, just slowly climb back in. And McQueen does a great job of making that and one basket. 56-47 is the score for this ball game. Connor Platt now wide open for a three, no good. Rebounded by McClendon. Foul is going to be number one, Zach Owens. Kind of looking at on the playing floor, that's uh, a little late, but hey, that's all right. He still called it. Zach Owens, that is his second personal foul. Team's ninth, so the next foul that the uh, Forcers commit will put the Lakers into the double bonus. Actually, for the Lakers, they have 16 fouls, so the next foul they commit will put.
forces into the one-on-one -on -one bonus. And fouls are going to be another thing for the forcers that looks like we're going to have to keep our eyes on again this season. Kyle Platt with the basketball, 36 seconds now, left in the half. Eight second differential between the game clock and shot clock. Peyton West, freshman, with the basketball, trying to drain a little bit of the clock. He's going to go inside, pass out to Sutton. Kyle Platt, Zach Owens, wide open for three, and that's good. 59 47, 13 seconds left to play in this first half. McClendon. Well, guarded against Sutton. McKenna goes up. Block, but I believe it, he's going to call a foul on the back side. I because I don't believe why. Yep, and he is going to call a, uh, a foul on Peyton West. And that's tough. That uh, really is tough. He comes over from the back side to help. Puts his arm up when he, no, he didn't need to because it's a, such a big mismatch there between McClendon and Hughes. Really didn't need Peyton to come over and do that. I like the aggressiveness, but now he's in foul trouble with three fouls. Clendon does not make that first one, so score still 59-47. 6.6 seconds left to go in the first half. All up and good. 48-59 now. Peyton West with the basketball. Gonna drive in, back out to Owens, 4-2, and hit at the buzzer. So that does it for half number one here in Flat Arena. 59. The fourth lead the Lakers. When we come back, we will have some halftime for you. And uh, just a little bit of discussion about what's going on there in the first. We will be right back. I am Dr. Fred Miller. I am the department chair of kinesiology and also an exercise science professor at Huntington University. Huntington University is unique as far as they get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention from the professor. You know, helping them learn the information or helping them administer a test, where at some universities you don't get that one-on-one -on -one from the professors. One of our themes focuses is on being a Christian and trying to be a good role model for others. We're here, we really care about the student and want to see that student succeed, not just preparing them for their future career, but also we want to prepare them to be a servant for God. Huntington University, we have a lot of equipment that students will get an opportunity to use and experience. Some of the equipment we have include a bod pod, which is very famous. We also have other interesting equipment that students will get to use. That equipment include a VO2 Max, a metabolic cart system. There's also a lot of equipment including other health measures. Students will get plenty of opportunity to learn how to use all this equipment and they will get uh, administering it to other students. Uh, oftentimes students who get an undergraduate degree in exercise science will go on to physical therapy school or even they will go on to physician assistant school. And then also another common career path for students is to become a strength conditioning specialist and mainly work with athletes. Exercise science is a degree where students will gain a lot of knowledge about health, but having someone that has the knowledge and experience to help an individual to get fit, to get healthy is important. And students at Huntington University, they learn about knowledge that's credible and that's important for students to have so they can help these individuals. So Powder Puff football is two teams divided up by floors and then they uh, all have flags so it's just a flag football game and um, so we have the two end zones and it's just like a regular game. Um, we put, usually play two 20 minute halves and it's just a good time for everybody to uh, get some football in since we don't have a football team here as a sport. Powder Puff to me is something that actually opened me up at Huntington. And 
for me, just as a freshman, obviously, like I get to know all the different girls on my floor, and we all grow closer together. Powderpuff just means a lot of unity between the girls on the floor. and just provided a lot of great, good fun between all the other girls on campus as well. Powderpuff means to me, it just signifies some of the best times uh, that you're going to have during homecoming weekend. Well, some other schools, uh, digital media arts and media in general, might kind of just be an afterthought. They might just store their gear in a closet. We have a dedicated place for all equipment. We have a dedicated staff member and a small team of students here to help out with all equipment needs. Life at Huntington, DMA Equipment Center, take one. We call it the cage and to our best knowledge, it probably uh, stands for Camera Audio Grip and Electrical. The cage, or the equipment center as some people call it, um, is really the hub of all equipment and resources for all of the film broadcast animation projects. Um, so if you need camera equipment, audio, lighting, anything that will help you out on set on a project, um, this is the place to get it. What I do here at the equipment center, uh, one of it is manage our uh, physical assets with the department. The even bigger part of that is the interaction with the students. Equipment usage at Huntington differs from a lot of other schools in the sense that they actually allow freshmen to get hands-on experience with the equipment that is provided here at the cage. So my job is um, to help people who need to reserve orders, um, I help people check out orders, spaces that are rentable, so Studio A, edit suites, the Foley Pit, scheduling all those. It also teaches students how a real rental house might work, so equipment care, the rental process, it covers all of that, so it's really foundational and important for the students' education too. It's always evolving, it's always improving, it's always growing, which is a reflection of an industry standard. Camera technology is constantly changing. You wait five minutes and there's an upgrade. That's probably the biggest challenge in trying to stay on top of uh, a good camera to student ratio so we can get hands on with everybody. Good, great question. We're able to actually add a little bit more than just checking in and checking out equipment. We oftentimes will actually give advice to students. If they have questions, they, they can be demonstrated to them and they can get extra learning and they can pick up some new skills that they might not be able to in a classroom. It's not just a job. You get to learn all about the film equipment here too. It's kind of a, just a central place where everybody can just come. Anytime we're open. We have all of the gear. Talk to a cage worker. Really learn from day one. And cut. Here in Huntington University's film program, we offer a one-of-a-kind experience. You'll have access to state-of-the-art equipment and the opportunity to gain practical experience on set. But what really sets us apart from other universities? While the films that we make are important to us, we give special attention to how we make them. 
In our film program, we understand the process behind making a film is just as important as the finished product you see on screen. And how we treat one another on set has a big impact. Which is why our program is part of the Kinema Commonwealth, a group of filmmakers dedicated to creating an environment of mutual respect that values individual artists over the bottom line. Our goal is to create excellent works of cinematic art and storytelling that both entertain and turn those involved into better people. We hold to three community values that make up the Kinema Manifesto. The first is respect for the individual, in which the time, energy, resources, and personal well-being of the artist are shown full respect. Artists are not just used for their talents, but embraced as collaborators. The second is respect for the community, where the natural environment, the local community, and the audience are all treated with the utmost care and respect. Filmmaking impacts not only the filmmakers, but those around us too. The third is respect for the art, because each filmmaker should be given artistic freedom to work creatively and to the best of their ability, while remembering that we are all working towards the same story. We believe that by living out these community values daily, the resulting projects will be works of passion, infused with the artistic voices of all the filmmakers. Our hope is that our students will not only practice these values during their four years here, but that they will take them into the professional industry and over time revolutionize the way films are made in the United States and the rest of the world. We are striving to create leaders who pursue excellence in their craft while showing love and respect to those around them. What does it mean to impact your community? As a broadcast media major at Huntington University, you'll explore that question and uncover the heart of storytelling. Tell real life stories of the world around you from day one and uncover why it matters to the campus, community, and beyond. It could be in our live TV studio through our award-winning newscast, broadcasting home athletic events, or running HU's very own radio station you'll have the opportunity to use industry standard equipment from 4K cameras to instant replay to better prepare you for a future career. In addition to foundational courses, you'll have the chance to specialize in church media, corporate media, news, or marketing and sales, or spend your last summer interning in one of America's largest cities, Phoenix, Arizona. In this one-of-a-kind opportunity, You'll have a home base at Huntington University's Arizona Center for Digital Media as you launch into professional opportunities catered toward your area of interest and enjoy the sunshine in the process. Your professional network begins as soon as you become a forester. Broadcast media majors at HU have a long-standing history of success in the job market. You'll be connected with alumni who have gone before you, not to mention all of your professors have industry experience. You've been given a gift. Why not use it to impact your world for Christ? Huntington University Broadcast Media. Real life stories, real world experiences. Impact your community. Everything has a beginning. A moment where a dream becomes an idea and an idea a creation. Cutting edge creators are engaging in the ever changing medium of digital media. But one thing never changes, and that's story. We are storytellers. Whether it's on set, in the lab, or in the field, we are always looking to understand the heart of society and explore the depths of human nature. The goal is to make captivating, moving narratives that the world will want to view and cherish. But the journey to that goal is vital. Where you learn and how you learn makes all the difference. Every great movie or broadcast has a creative body working behind it. And those artists and technicians had to learn, had to start somewhere. 
They needed a place to tap into their passions and train in their craft. Digital media is a living, breathing thing, consisting of a network of moving parts. Different skills are necessary for a healthy, creative body. Some skills you may not have even heard of yet. And without each of those individual breathing parts, we would look and sound a whole lot like this. We need you. In Huntington University's Digital Media Arts Department, you get your hands on equipment from day one. You don't have to wait a few years to get in the studio or get on a set. In your first year, in your first semester, you'll work in supporting roles on underclassmen projects and even get to develop your own stories. So, you want to operate the red? We can do that. Want to learn how to use a Cintiq? We got you covered. How about anchoring a live TV studio? Yeah, we got one of those too. You may not have a clear plan in mind, or may not know what your interests are yet, but your years at Huntington are time for self-discovery and to embrace your passions. One thing's for sure, the professors are always a source of encouragement and ongoing advice, who more than anything want to see you succeed and grow in those passions. You may be missing home, but rest assured, you always have a family to turn to in this department. Not only does the program grow your technical and artistic side, but it also pushes you to seek truth and grow in your walk with Christ. The power of story itself derives from Jesus. Our artistic skills and visions can be a most meaningful form of worship. Welcome back to Platte Arena. I'm Noah Tobias along with Ryan Lockhart. The score at halftime is 59 to 48. With under a minute left to go here at halftime. Ryan, what are some stats that you know really caught your eye there? Yeah, no, if you look at, you know, just points, first of all, for your forcer, Zach Owens had 16 points, Connor Platt 15, and the freshman Middlesworth 11. Middlesworth also had seven rebounds go with that. Owens four rebounds, Connor Platt four rebounds as well. So, you know, big numbers from those three guys. Tyler Aarons, seven points, two rebounds. Forcer shooting 56% from the field, but I think a key stat in this one, Wright State had five turnovers in about five minutes, you know what, the last five minutes that was. So I think for the Forcers to stay winning this one, they're going to have to do a good job. They're going to have to do a good job of, you know, keeping this lead, taking smart shots, and not turning the ball over. Yep, I agree 100%. You know, it's been an interesting half. It's really been up and down for the Foresters, and it's been, well, I guess it's been down and up for the Foresters, and then for the Lakers, it's been up and down. Because really, the Lakers started off the half really, really strong, lots of confidence, uh, but then all of a sudden that was all lost when they got, uh, what, that's those seven turnovers in the last five minutes of the half. Uh, and Huntington took full advantage of that, so kudos for Huntington to learning to take advantage of all of those turnovers because, man, did that ever make an impact into this game. Second half underway here. McClendon for the Lakers with the basketball guarded by Macon. Go up for two. No good. Rebounded by Middlesworth. On the floor for your Forcers, we have Macon, Middlesworth, Platt, Owens, and Aarons. Macon to Platt. Down low to Aarons. Spin around. Post move. No good. And now Harden with the basketball. Bad pass. Taylor was not looking for that pass at all. And Platt looking to take advantage of it. Cleaned up by Aarons. 61-48 now. Yeah, good follow up by Aarons there, but right out of the, really right out of another cannon. Noah McClendon came right down the floor and both teams playing really quick here to start the second half. Aarons now with the basketball up top. Now to Macon. Back to Platt. One step, jump shot, no good. Usually he's automatic from there, but McClendon gets the rebound for the Lakers. Harden now going to the inside, up for two, and draws a foul. Yeah, Harden pretty explosive in that first half, Noah. On the season, only averages six points a game. Had nine in that first half, and really, I believe it was like the first five minutes he had those nine. Nick Macon called for his third personal foul. Team's first here in half number two. And really, that's that's a big foul for that to be his third foul. Forces are really going to have to keep a close eye on Macon so he doesn't pick up another foul. Yeah, Peyton West has two fouls as well, so maybe Jane Sun's a guy that can benefit from a little bit of those guys that being in foul trouble. You know, Speaking of Jaden Sutton, 
At the beginning of this year, of the school year, he was planning on redshirting, and I thought that was going to be an interesting move because I thought we could use him a lot this year. But then, after I believe it was like the first scrimmage or around that area of time, he decided to not redshirt. And I think that honestly, that was a great decision as Tyler Aarons makes a three pointer. But with Jaden Sutton, I, honestly, I think it was a great decision for him not to redshirt this year because I, I think he's going to get a lot more playing time than what he thinks. Number two, Harden goes to the inside, back out to McClendon. Hesitates his step and gets the pass stolen away, trying to pass it down to Antonio McQu McQueen. Aaron's now to Platt. He goes in, back out to Middlesworth for three. No good, but cleaned up by Connor Platt. Yeah, Connor Platt following up that shot perfectly right there. And Platt, Aarons, and Middlesworth all playing really well right now. Throwing Zach Owens, who got the rebound there. And know the Forsters outside of the first about five to six minutes have really looked good tonight. Zach Owens pass, stolen away by Taylor, and he goes up for a layup. But good job by Zach Owens. Just trying to get back and just to contest that layup. Yeah, you don't want to commit a foul there and, you know, give him maybe an and one opportunity as Macon goes to the ground with Harden as well. And that foul will be on Harden as Harden throwing his hands up in disbelief right there, Noah. But I think we saw a different side of that one. Oh, definitely. His arm was all over him. And, I mean, that's the only thing that the ref needs to see to call a foul. And, you, you know, you, honestly, you see that in the NBA a lot. You're seeing it a lot more and more in college basketball a lot where – you know, uh, the players just throw out their hands and say, what in the world? I didn't do anything, but it's obvious that you did. Tyler Aarons now with the basketball, getting it down to Middlesworth. Pump fake, goes up for two, and that is good. And that is a good, strong move by the freshman. Yeah, Middlesworth right into McQueen. I think Middlesworth may be winning that freshman challenge right now, Noah. Harden with the basketball, down to Mc over to McClendon. Now to Taylor, Taylor for three, and that rattles home. 68 to 57 now. And Taylor now with 12 points on the game. Platt down to Aarons. Aarons with the left hand, no good. Just a little right on the rim. Harden now with the basketball. Calling for your Taylor. Taylor, three balls up, no good. Rebounded by Macon, the senior. Macon now moving. Trying to go inside, but Harden's a great job to recover. Pass down low to Platt. Now to Middlesworth for three, no good. And rebounded by Aarons. Now Platt, a little touch shot, no good. Rebounded by McQueen. And Platt almost too open right there. Macon looking to help out in an easy dish inside for a zone. And yeah, Macon, he was really trying to take a charge, but then at the last second he was he just kind of aborted on that plan. Macon now with the basketball. Little step back, picks up his dribble, gives to Owens. Owens inside, blocked by McQueen. But Aarons does a good job of watching that entire thing, picking up the ball and just putting in the hoop from point blank range. Yeah, McQueen did everything good except for get that rebound there. So you can't really discredit him by no means. And the, and the Lakers stepped out of bounds, so t another turnover for them. It's going to be a media timeout, and we will take it along with them. 70 to 59, Forcers up by 11 with 15.30 left to play right here in Platt Arena.
Hello and welcome back inside Platt Arena. Ryan Lockhart joined by Noah Tobias. And Noah, this has been almost a game of two halves so far and maybe two halves in its own half in the first half. But right now the Forcers look like they're gelling. They look like, you know, unless something drastic happens, the Forcers, I know it's early to say no, but I can see him pulling this one out. Yeah, both teams have scored 11 points here in this second half so far. 15 minutes, 15 seconds remaining. Middlesworth gets that inbound pass. Denied, and the official is going to call a offensive foul. Not really sure what happened right there as we take a look at it. Oh, and El Owens did kind of get an elbow. That's hard from that angle to... And we're, we're actually gonna be looking at the instant replay right now. If we could go back to that last foul. Yeah, no, the foul was called on Owens there. And it looks like there's just a lot of confusion among a lot of different people here. No, I'm not, I'm not even sure if the rest know what they're going to talk about. Well, and I don't even know, honestly, if like if they can even review that. And so they are... If we could see that, if we could see that other angle with uh, uh, the basketball camera down low near the basket, maybe that angle. If you could run it back again. Yeah, big play here. And you know, this is one that forcers down, or the forcers up 11 right now. Can be a key one as the game, you know, ticks down. 5.09 left on the clock here. And it's just a tough play to call. No, it's nice we do have instant replay it, now, it, so we can do some things like this. It is, honestly, it's been great. If we could do that replay again. No, we see here on Platt Arena, the force are faithful, the student section looking more lively this year than years past. Definitely, I'm loving everybody standing up. Oh, hey, uh, Kobe, if you could keep running that replay for the officials. Yeah, we see the Forcers up 70 to 59 right now ahead of Wright State Lake. And this game's been a back and forth contest right now. Just to look at some more stats, Forcers right now shooting 40% from deep, 6 of 15. Field goal percentage is 51, they're 28 of 54. They're perfect from the line though, 8 of 8. And 100%, but on the rebounds, on the boards, excuse me. Right now they're doing a great job of cleaning it up. 30 to 17, they're out rebounding Wright State Lake. They're doing a great right, job so far tonight, Noah. Right I think sorry, we sorry might have, have everything sorted out. Yep. Sorry okay. we hey, took just a moment. Sorry we're taking time. just a moment extra for this, but a couple more stats for your leading scorer for the Forcers is Connor Platt with 17 points. McClendon, 12 for Wright State. Your rebounding leaders, Middlesworth has eight, McQueen has five. Both freshmen there doing a great job tonight. Harden, the assist leader for Wright State with four, and Macon, three for your Forcers. As we see that replay once again slowed down. A huge thank you to Adam Widener, Lance Clark, and just everybody that helped fund us to get this new system be, to be able to you know, help out and show this replay itself. We know we got a lot of people that help out here. Paige Schreiber, our very own Noah Tobias right here, Bray Snyder, Kobe Solms, and Justin Coleman all back doing a lot of work for us, Noah. And I know we almost take it for granted sometimes that how easy we kind of have it now because of how our system is. Yeah, definitely. And honestly, it, 
This entire thing has been a huge team effort between everybody in the broadcasting department. Uh, just getting our new TriCaster system worked out with our new replay. Uh, it has been a challenge for sure, making sure that everything is right. And you know, as you can see, we still have a few technical difficulties. We had some stuff with audio, but honestly, it, it's been a, a great challenge for this team and we have definitely accomplished a lot and another thank you to Professor Adam Weiner and Dr. Lance Clark for really helping us with this system and uh, doing everything that they possibly could to getting for getting us this system so thank you again back to the game number two Chaz Harden able to make that last free throw actually able to make both free throws so 61 to 70 is the score right now. It's kind of an interesting thing going through that process, Ryan. And Taylor able to get the three there right out of the break. And Noah, a five-point swing in the matter of really just one possession on a long call there. Once again, sorry for that delay, but with the new replay, we're going to have opportunities like that this season. And Tyler Aarons goes to the hole. Can't get it, but Noah. Oh, whoo. That would have been intense. Platt Arena would have just erupted right oh. there. We'll take a look at this one. A great angle here, and Aarons doing a good job of taking it inside. Foul called on number 23, Tyrone Ozone right there. Uh, Aaron's able to get right on up and trying to free throw. Jaden Sutton checks back in for Nick Macon. Score 71 to 64. Tyler Aaron's with 14 points to his name so far in this game, and it's going to be 15 points for him now. Yeah, Connor Platt still leads your forcers with 17 points, though, but. You know, all these guys looking good so far tonight, Noah. And number 23, Ozan with the basketball going to the inside. Passed out to 22, McClendon. Three-point jumper, no good. Rebounded by Connor Platt. Gives it off to Jaden Sutton. Goes up the floor. Juggles it. Gives it to Middlesworth. Down to Aaron's left hand, no good. And Peyton West almost cleaned it up, but could not power that thing up there enough. And now Peyton West is going to be called for a foul, and that's his fourth. It, honestly, that is not a good foul whatsoever. Really, Wright State Lake did not have, they weren't in, uh, they weren't threatening the Foresters at all on that possession, and so that's yeah. just, that's a tough play. Almost seemed like a frustration foul there, Noah's. We'll see West now take a seat for what will probably be a lengthy amount of time as Zach Owens checks back in. But no, remember Owens, I believe he has 16 right now, so Owens a spark right now for the Forcers they may need. McQueen could not corral that one. Another turnover for the Lakers. Yeah, a pass was just a little too far out in front of him. Jane Sutton now. And a little turnover. Harden did a great job of getting his hands right in there. Harden now going to inbound the pass. Gives it off to McClendon. With 13.49 left to go here in this ball game. Score is 72-64. Thank you everybody for joining us right here on YouTube and also on 105.5 WQHU. Zach Owens now breakaway. Tyler Aarons with the basketball. Connor Platt to Zach Owens. Thought about the three. And now we'll reset the offense with 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Connor Platt with the basketball. Gives off to Tyler Aarons. That was a dangerous pass. Never really seen Tyler Aarons up there. Pass stolen away. Harden now goes up with it. And that's a pretty athletic move while still being up there in the air. Jaden Sutton now pushing, pressuring the ball. Connor Platt for three, no good. And rebounded by Taylor. Yeah, Connor able to line that one up, but not able to knock it down there. A little frustrating for the Forcers, but the Lakers 
can't get a three as well. That was Taylor that shot it. Taylor will be down for a minute. It looks like he gets back up holding his nose and Sutton inside there for the easy layup and basket there. But we'll have a timeout for an injury it appears. No, it was Middlesworth that had his hand up. And it looks like connected with Taylor. We'll get back to play here as now Middlesworth will take a seat and Ballinger into the game. Middlesworth with 13 points and eight rebounds right now, Noah. And freshman is impressing me. Definitely. Both Oak Hill players are doing a great job to this point. Middlesworth with 13 points to this point. And now for the Lakers, Clendon go inside, goes inside, and Jaden does a good job of getting in there. It's just he was very unlucky when the ball almost like stuck on the <laughs> ground, and then his foot tapped it out. But again, great hustle by the sophomore. I'm not going to take that away from him at all. McClendon now with the basketball goes to the inside, pushed by Sutton. And so. Number 22, Patrick McClendon will be at the line shooting two. Jaden Sutton picks up his second personal foul. Team's fourth for the second half. McClendon for the Lakers, Noah, averages 15 on the season in three contests for the Lakers. Tonight, though, after this free throw, he'll have now 13 points. So, you know, getting around his season average. But McClendon, a guy as well as McQueen, and Harding, guys that we expect to step up for this Lakers squad if they're going to stay in this ball game. And that one rattles home. Now the score is 68 to 74. Good job by Jaden Sutton going right in to number 22, McClendon. McClendon picks up his second personal foul, team number three of the second half. And Nick Macon will check back in for the Foresters. Checks in for Connor Platt. Connor Platt has 17 points. He's leading all scorers to this point. Harden with 15. And Zach Evans with 16. Jaden Sutton with the basketball. 12 minutes, 10 seconds left to go here in this ball game. And Sutton is going to be called for a travel. And words are being exchanged between Harden and Sutton. Harden just comes up to Sutton and just starts talking right in his ear. Yeah, it seemed like it was all playful though, Noah, as both guys, you know, they've been kind of tripping back and forth all game there. The official coming up, making sure there's no extra curricular going on there. McClendon with the basketball in the corner, goes inside with left hand, no good, rebounded by Aarons. Gives it off to Owens now, trying to push the ball up. Nice Euro step by him. Oh, he's not necessarily a step, a one-two step, but no difference in the points. 76 to 68, Forster's up by eight. With a minute 30 seconds left to go in this ball game. As now Harden pulls up for a three, and that's nothing but net. 76, 71, Forster's now only up by five, and that's gonna be a reach-in foul by number 23, Ozan. Yeah, no, if you're the forcers on defense on that last possession, you can't let Harden just line up that shot and take it like that. You gotta at least step out and put a hand up there. Forcers up 76 to 71 over the Lakers. Sutton now, he was really trying to get that one in there quickly. He was running out of time. Macon now gives it to Owens. Owens on the left side gives it over to 23, Ballinger. The scuffle goes on underneath. And number 22, McClendon with the basketball. Over to Taylor for three. No good. And a lot of events were going on down there as Aaron was trying to get the rebound. Also, McQueen trying to get the rebound there as well. And he will be, he will draw a foul. Yeah, Aaron's taking a really hard fall to the ground there. Coach Platt really won a 30 second timeout and he gets it and we will stay right here. Again, the score 76-71. Tyler Aarons, he went to the ground right there last uh, 
the last couple of seconds. And he went down pretty hard, Ryan. Yeah, Aarons is a guy that you expect to be a huge part of the team this year. You do not like him to go into the ground. We'll get a replay of it here. You see Aarons that looked like really right on his back and, you know, hit maybe even a wrist in there as well. But no, Aarons so far tonight hasn't had the greatest night. 16 points. I say hasn't had the greatest night. But from Tyler Aarons, you, you expect a lot. You expect a lot of rebounds, a lot of points. Really just controlling this team on the defense. Eight, uh, six rebounds, 16 points. Tyler Aarons, though, a good game for the first home opener. Definitely. The Foresters are coming out here and showing everybody that they can play. It's going to be interesting as conference season comes up, really, just how the league is going to be. Indiana Wesleyan going to most likely have another strong year. Again, getting another seven-footer. They now have a total of two of them on their squad, and that in itself is intimidating. Yeah, don't remind me, Noah. <laughs> yeah, and so the Foresters, pre-ranking-wise, uh, they're pre-ranked seventh in the conference. Uh, but also for the girls' team, they're, they're pre-ranked fifth, and I would say for both of those pre-rankings, they are pretty low. Uh, I would not expect them to be that low towards the end of the season, but we'll let the season talk for itself as now the score is 76 to 73. Forcers up by three. 10.41 left as Connor Platt takes a three. No good rebound by Harden. Harden now bringing the basketball up for the Lakers. Clendon goes to the inside. No good, but cleaned up by 23, Tyrone Ozan. Yeah, no block out there led to that easy putback for Wright State. Forcers need that energy to go back up for themselves. Really, their energy level overall is just very low. Blocked by number three, McQueen. And breakaway layup there made by Taylor. I can imagine that Coach Platt is furious right now coming out of that timeout and nothing big happening here so far as another missed shot by the Foresters occur. Yeah, the Foresters just have not been moving the ball well here at all, Noah. Turnovers and just poor shots have really hurt them here in the last couple minutes. Making, though, a nice steal there. Trying to get something going for this Forester squad, and they'll call that a charge. That'll be on making there. Throwing a little bit of an elbow into Taylor. It's been a frustrating game for Macon. Macon only attempted two shots, and he's two for two for those shots, but he has really been hounded all night long. There's a little bit of a shove there, so I'll give that to the official. That's going to be a full timeout. We'll take it along with them. 76-77, the Lakers have taken back the lead. Welcome back here in Platt Arena. 9.37 left to go here in this ball game. Byron Taylor, man, making another impact in this game. He has 17 points. And again, I want to remind you, he's coming off of the bench. I mean, his first game, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong, he had around 20 points. His second game against uh, Blue Lakes College, he had 35 points. And then already, he has 17 points in this ball game. He's he's really trying to fight for a uh, for a starting spot, but I don't know. Maybe he could be like a Haley Crewell last year, <laughs> like for the girls' team for us. You know, Haley Crewell was just kind of that spark that the Foresters always needed. What, what would you say about that? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I think you want a spark coming off the bench. You know, that second unit magic almost. But a guy like that, if you have 17 off the bench, you almost have to wonder what he can do in your starting lineup, Noah. We get back to basketball here. You mentioned our Foresters down 76 to 77. 
9.30 left in this ball game. And Harden now with a long three-pointer, and that's good. Talking a little trash into Zach, zone, into Zach Owens here as well. Peyton West now, spin move out to Zach Owens. Goes baseline, up for two, over the big man, and that's good. 78 to 80 with a little over nine minutes remaining. Yeah, nice and a smart take there by Zach Owens, but Peyton West there with that key steal. You know he has four fouls, so he's got to play smart down the stretch here. 23. Ozan able to drain that three-point basket. And I tell you what, that whenever they're hitting their three-pointers, that's when they're the strongest. That's when they have the most momentum. Peyton West, though, going to take this game into his own hands. Gets a nice layup to go in and draws a foul. That foul goes up against number three, Antonio McQueen. And that's a second personal foul as we check out that replay. But Peyton West, man, that's, that's a strong move, and it's a good job having plenty of body control during that. Not able to make the free throw, but rebounded by Tyler Ahrens. Pass stolen away. And an easy basket by number 22, Patrick McClendon. Forcers thought they were going to have another chance to get even more points up there, but instead, Lakers do a good job of trying to feed off the energy that Peyton West had by kind of making him make a mistake. He puts it down low to Middlesworth, and that's a great-looking left hand by the freshman. And Noah, I think the officials missed a double dribble call there. Everybody in Platt Arena calling for it. And he's saying that he was kind of muffling up the ball a little bit. 22, McClendon will be called for a travel. And the fans are happy about that because they get the ball back anyways. 82 to 85. Had just a little bit of a travel. Forgot to put the ball down there for the first couple of steps. Tyler Aarons now with the basketball. Pushing off, going up with the left, and that rattles home. And Noah, I mentioned that post footwork. Aarons is so well at right there. A perfect exhibit A right there. And the thing is, when he gets the ball, he's very patient down there. Instead of, you know, when one move doesn't work, he passes it out or, or kind of... Uh, has too much energy and just doesn't know what to do with it, but he's very calm. If one thing doesn't work, he is able to try another thing. Connor Platt now going to the inside and a lot of body contact, but he lost the ball. It's still Forster ball, but no foul was called. 84 to 85, seven minutes, 12 seconds remaining. 15 seconds on the shot clock for the Foresters. Really got to keep that in mind. Connor Platt with the basketball. Dribble is off his foot. He's on the ground right in front of us. Gets out to Middlesworth. West to Owens. 4-3. And that's good. What, um, what ball movement by the Foresters. I mean, that is the best ball movement I've seen all game. They now take the lead, 87-85. Pass batted out. Actually, it was just uh, thrown away by the Lakers. Yeah, the Forcers looking to run right away here. Zach Owens to Tyler Aarons now a miss three there. Tip missed by West as well, but no, the Forcers, they're running right now up two against the Lakers there. Again, trying to push the ball. Peyton West out in front. He's got a couple. And he's got a body foul coming to him. 23, Tyrone o uh, Ozan. He did get him with the body, but man, that block was clean. Wow, what a beautiful block there by Ozan Owen. Looked like West, he had Owens running right there with, with him. So he could have had, you know, the easy dump off pass there as we'll take a replay on this. Wow, no, what a big block by Ozone. Just loaded up like a spring there, was able to climb the ladder. Ozone with that fouled out as well. Well, and now the, the coaches for Wright State are arguing that he only has four fouls. It looks like Ahmad Smith, though, will 
check into the game. Excuse me, it'll be number five, Elijah Woods, the junior from Holland, Michigan. Yeah, well, and so I would say if I was the coach, you know, I'm not sure if I really like him going up for that block attempt. If he has four fouls, is he had 12 points for the Lakers. I mean, he, he's made a pretty big impact with 12 points and five rebounds. And he was another one of those guys when the threes were falling, Noah, he was able to hit them relatively as easy as anybody else for this Laker squad was. Like West able to connect on both those free throws. Yeah, a good job by him, you know, getting shaken up, having to wait just a little bit, and still able to make both of those free throws. 89, 85, 620 left to go. McClendon, easy two points. Couldn't make it, though. Woods now with the basketball. He's going to drive inside, and he gets his shot blocked. McQueen with the rebound. One dribble, up, and good. And Noah, I... First game of the season, I might as well be that guy with the <laughs> officials. I don't like that call. I do not. No, no point whatsoever. Payne West was standing straight up. Did not move whatsoever. We'll take a replay of this. Maybe it'll change my opinion. I'm sorry for this one, folks. Straight up right there, a little bump. And West and did he, not and, move. It didn't appear. And honestly, he was trying to take himself out of the play. I mean, honestly, that was a great job by Peyton West. I mean, he, and he, yeah, I, I, after seeing the replay, I, I don't agree with that call, but that's the beauty of replay, is that we're able to Yeah, go West back will and watch foul that. out with four points, Noah, and rather suspicious fifth call there, but McQueen at the line there, able to connect there. It will make both of those to tie the ball game up at 89. Six minutes left to go in this ball game. Connor, and now Owens. Back to Connor Platt for three, and that's good. 92-88. And Connor Platt has been the answer all night long for the Forcers. He's been the answer they needed. And that's a big travel there by McQueen. Another turnover the Forcers able to force there. And again, you know, he is a freshman, so that's kind of a freshman mistake, honestly. He kind of just gets too excited there down in the paint, and he just forgets that he needs to dribble the ball, or he just can't dribble the ball if he picks up his dribble. 92-88, still Nick May. Nice pass over to Connor Platt, and he gets something off the backboard. 94-88. The back door is open, Noah. McClendon now with the basketball. Painter for three. 6'7 sophomore, and that was, that wasn't even close. I, I, I'm, I'm yeah. shocked that he took that because honestly, the, the three-point shot for him doesn't necessarily look very natural like it would the Tyler Aarons or, or really to Middlesworth. I know Middlesworth hasn't made anything. Speaking of Middlesworth, there he is. Yeah, you better take that one back right there, Noah. He heard you on that one. He had to have. <laughs> I apologize, Middlesbrough. <laughs> 96 88. Forcers now up by eight. Doing a good job of just keeping their confidence here. Painter for three. Okay, I'll take that one back as well. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm jinxing everybody right now. 96 91, four minutes, 30 seconds. Nick May putting a little shuffle on for Harden. Now Connor Platt with the basketball. He's going to go to the inside. Floater off the backboard and good for Platt. Foul on number zero, Byron Taylor. And that is, that's huge. Taylor, that is his first personal foul of the ball game. And that's a 17 foul, so for the remainder of this game, the Forcers will be in the bonus. Yeah, Connor Platt electing to go with the floater there instead of driving it into McQueen. And McQueen looked like he was waiting for it. Connor Platt really wanting that one to go down, but just runs out, 98-91. McClendon goes up and makes that basket. What a move by him. And again, Zach Owens, you know, he had his hands up. And he was moving his feet, so he was pushing his, he was putting himself right in front. But that's, again, that, that's a tough call. So it's going to be a 30-second timeout. 
That's going to be a full timeout, so we will take that along with Wright State Lake. Score 98-93, 411 remaining right here in Platt Arena. Welcome back to Platte Arena for a 11 ball game. 98-93, Forsters ahead of the Lakers. And right now, Ryan, Zach Owens, he has four fouls. Nick Macon, he has four fouls. And Zach Owens, he is having a heck of a game. He's got 23 points. Carter Platt, the only person that is, has more points in this game. But, I mean, Owens and Platt both really do for another great season. Yeah, both these guys, we talked about the work that Zach Owens put in the offseason. Let's not act like Connor Platt was not in here just as much, if not more, Noah, than Zach Owens was, because it seemed like if one guy was here, the other one was just as well. Those two are going to be really fun to watch this season. If they're not on your radar, you better put them on now. Well, the thing is, Connor Platt, he basically lives right across the street, <laughs> being from Huntington North. I mean, he can come here whenever he wants. He can practice in this kind of an atmosphere. Uh, not necessarily with people, of course, but just in the, his home gym. And that in itself is a lot. Tyler Aarons now with the basketball, going to work on Painter. Left hand, no good. Rebounded by Aarons. Almost a travel by Harden as he caught the ball. McClendon with the basketball, out to Painter for three, and that's good. Well, there's two threes made by Painter now. And Nick Macon with the basketball, but 98 to 97. Force is still ahead by one, but 3.30 left to go in this ball game. Pretty high scoring game for the first game of the year, for the, for the second game of the year for the Forsters as Owens makes a move his, of his own and gets an easy layup to go in. And Noah, 100 points in the first home opener here. Big game for the Forsters is making great defense on the inside there by McQueen, or on McQueen, excuse me. Now driving through traffic, big take there by Macon. Wow, Noah, what a take in between three and four defenders. And you know, that's kind of what Jaden Sutton has been doing this game. I mean, he's just shocked all of us by going up for different layups. Uh, but really, I mean, he's just weaved his way in between the defenders. And we actually haven't seen him a lot here recently. And I'm kind of surprised because he's done pretty well. But again, Forster's really need to get more energy out there and they kind of started to. You can see Tyler Ahrens, he's really getting to be out of breath right now. He's been in there for, actually, he's been in there for a long time. I don't even, has he sat out this second half? I don't think I've seen him come out, but on the same, or on the opposite side, Noah, McClendon over here asking for a timeout. He needs a breather. Taking it to the hole six out of the last seven times for this Laker squad. This one goes out of bounds. Right to us, Noah, but a turnover there by the Forsters, and we'll see Taylor now check in for McClendon. Forsters currently up 102 to 99 against the Wright State Lakers. Number two, Harden with the basketball over to Taylor. Harden to Woods. Swings it back to Taylor, down low to McQueen. McQueen taking Aaron's on one on one. Needs some help. Painter now with the basketball cannot hold on to it, and Macon comes up with it. Macon just trying to waste a little bit of time. Aaron's now three-point basket up, no good. Rebounded by Connor Platt. Now Macon back out with it again, trying to waste a little bit of clock. They're only at three, but wasting a little bit of clock is still good. And you know, no, I would love Connor Platt to go right back up with that one. But at the same time, I like him stopping, pulling that back out. I don't like Connor Platt cutting on that and Nick Macon and Platt not being on the same side right there. A big turnover for the Forcers. Well, 
and again, part of it is it's the beginning of the season. You're trying, you're still trying to feel out how everybody is, uh, how everybody is going to play and everything. As McQueen gets another basket, 102 to 101. Forster still up by one. Owens going to the inside. He goes up and he makes a two-point basket from point blank range. McQueen, he got kind of hit in the jaw a little bit. He was actually asking for a foul, but full timeout called by the Foresters. 104 to 101, 128 remaining right here in Platte Arena. Welcome back here inside Platt Arena as we take a look at Zach Owens' last take. Inside there, you see McQueen, cameraman down low. Shelby Price getting a great angle of that one. No, the Forster's up three right now, 128 remaining. Take a deep breath because I believe we're in for a good rest of the ball game, Noah. Wouldn't it be crazy if the first game of the year went to overtime? Oh, don't say that, please, Noah. Right now, though, the Forsters playing good basketball, not in the last couple minutes. So Zach Owens, 27 points. Connor Platt, 24 points. Caleb Middlesworth, 17. And Aarons has 18. The Forsters have been slow and methodical, Noah, but they've had the lead at one point, had a 12-point lead. But they've also been down by 13 at one point. So this has really been an interesting game for us to call. Harden with the basketball for the Lakers, giving it back to Taylor and now to Harden. Defense has been a lot better, but honestly, the offenses have been a lot better as well. That's, that's tough. That's a really tough call for the official. Saying middle is worth Still gave a lot of body right there, and that's it's only his first personal foul, but it's still the team's eighth. As we kind of check that out here, he just kind of I don't know, he almost he just slipped as hard as his, I'm sorry, Taylor able to make his first free throw. Yeah, that being middle was worth first foul. No, that's got to be a bright light for the Forsters because we know the foul trouble that Biggs have had here in the past for Huntington, able to connect on that second one. One point ball game here inside Platt Arena as we're just over a minute. Zach Owens with the basketball. One minute now remaining in this ball game. Tyler Aarons with the basketball. Zach Owens back with the ball. Euro step and that's good. 106, 103 now. And yeah, make that 29 for the game for Zach Owens and he's doing great right now. One possession game still. Harden with the basketball. Going up and swatted by Middlesworth. What a block. That could not have been any more perfectly timed. He's now making with the basketball, almost stolen away by Harden. And a foul will be drawn by Macon. What a block. Oh my goodness. What a beautiful block as well, Noah. And again, the Forsters are going to be in the one and one bonus. That foul was on number two, Harden. That is his second personal foul. Macon here at the line, another guy that's been perfect this season. Gets that one to fall as well. And Noah, in his first game, Macon had 19. Right now he has six. It's been maybe a little bit of why Macon's been frustrated tonight. But I don't think Macon's played a terrible game at all. He has two rebounds as well, and those two big free throws he just hit to push this to another possession. And the official is going to call a timeout. Wright State Lake calling for a timeout. We'll keep it here. 22 seconds left in this ballgame, 108 to 103. 
That is a 30-second timeout. But again, you are right. Owens has 29 points, six rebounds. He does have four fouls, so still going to have to be a little careful. Nick Macon, he only has five assists going. Uh, oh, he only has five assists right now. But Zach Owens, my goodness, what a show. I mean, what a show. I can't remember the last time Zach Owens has had this good of a game. But honestly, it just shows how much he's grown from last year to this year. Honestly, last year, I think we can agree he was a little sporadic. Uh, his defense, it was quick, but it wasn't controlled. But this year, he's so much better. He's so much better. And no, remember, he was only a freshman last year. Only a freshman. That's true, yes. So I believe with you know this development we see from Zach, this could be something we see Zach, I wouldn't say necessarily take over this team, but do a good job of leading this team. Woods getting off to Taylor, quick three, and no good, rebounded by Owens. Owens now just trying to waste the clock, and a foul will be called on Woods. That is Woods' first personal foul. Team ninth, so the next foul that Wright State Lake commits will put the Forcers into the double bonus. But for right now, Zach Owens at the line, shooting the one in bonus. 108 to 103. Two possession game right now. Doesn't matter if he makes it or misses it. And 10 seconds on the clock. First one, good. <laughs> you see Zach Owens take a little bit of the high fives there. Ooh. Getting some laughter from the guys. And we know Owens quite a bit of a jokester, Noah. We'll see if he can connect on the second one as well. Up and good, 110 to 103. Harden with the basketball. Push off, three point basket, no good. Rebounded by Aarons. And you, it's silly, but you gotta call that because that was just, he, he shouldn't have done that. That's just a frustration foul. But I mean that, it's not necessarily needed as Byron Taylor commits his second personal foul. He's a freshman, so he's frustrated on how tonight went, but he still played a decent game. He's got, he had 19 points and three rebounds. You know, the Forcers are gonna be victorious once again here. This will be their fourth straight game they've won. Last time out here at HU, the Forcers won 111 to 81. Mentioned Connor Platt had 38 points, nine rebounds, and 10 assists. And oh, with that, the final buzzer there, the Forcers win 112 to 103. And again, we will be right back with some end of game statistics and even an interview from Coach Platt himself. Stick with us. What does it mean to impact your community? As a broadcast media major at Huntington University, you'll explore that question and uncover the heart of storytelling. Tell real life stories of the world around you from day one and uncover why it matters to the campus, community, and beyond. It could be in our live TV studio through our award-winning newscast, broadcasting home athletic events, or running HU's very own radio station you'll have the opportunity to use industry standard equipment from 4K cameras to instant replay to better prepare you for a future career. In addition to foundational courses, you'll have the chance to specialize in church media, corporate media, news, or marketing and sales. 
or spent your last summer interning in one of America's largest cities, Phoenix, Arizona. In this one-of-a-kind opportunity, you'll have a home base at Huntington University's Arizona Center for Digital Media as you launch into professional opportunities catered toward your area of interest and enjoy the sunshine in the process. Your professional network begins as soon as you become a forester. Broadcast media majors at HU have a long-standing history of success in the job market. You'll be connected with alumni who have gone before you, not to mention all of your professors have industry experience. You've been given a gift. Why not use it to impact your world for Christ? Huntington University Broadcast Media. Real life stories, real world experiences. Impact your community. I am Dr. Fred Miller. I am the department chair of kinesiology and also an exercise science professor at Huntington University. Huntington University is unique as far as they get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention from the professor. You know, helping them learn the information or helping them administer a test, whereas some universities you don't get that one-on-one -on -one from the professors. One of our themes focuses is on being a Christian and trying to be a good role model for others. We're here, we really care about the student, we want to see that student succeed, not just preparing them for their future career, but also we want to prepare them to be a servant for God. Huntington University, we have a lot of equipment that students will get an opportunity to use and experience. Some of the equipment we have include a bod pod, which is very famous. We also have other interesting equipment that students will get to use. That equipment include a VO2 Max, a metabolic cart system. There's also a lot of equipment including other health measures. Students will get plenty of opportunity to learn how to use all this equipment and they will get uh, administering it to other students. Uh, oftentimes students who get an undergraduate degree in exercise science will go on to physical therapy school or even they will go on to physician assistant school. And then also another common career path for students is to become a strength conditioning specialist and mainly work with athletes. Exercise science is a degree where students will gain a lot of knowledge about health, but having someone that has the knowledge and experience to help an individual to get fit, to get healthy is important. And students at Huntington University, they learn about knowledge that's credible and that's important for students to have so they can help these individuals. So Power Puff football is two teams divided up by floors and then they uh, all have flags so it's just a flag football game and um, so we have the two end zones and it's just like a regular game. Um, we usually play two 20 minute halves and it's just a good time for everybody to uh, get some football in since we don't have a football team here as a sport. Powder Puff to me is something that actually opened me up at Huntington. And for me, just as a freshman, obviously, like I get to know all the different girls on my floor, and we all grow closer together. Powder Puff means to me, it just signifies some of the best times uh, that you're going to have during homecoming weekend.
Well, some other schools, uh, digital media arts and media in general, might kind of just be an afterthought. They might just store their gear in a closet. We have a dedicated place for all equipment. We have a dedicated staff member and a small team of students here to help out with all equipment needs. Life at Huntington, DMA Equipment Center, take one. We call it the cage and to our best knowledge, it probably uh, stands for Camera, Audio, Grip, and Electrical. The cage, or the equipment center as some people call it, um, is really the hub of all equipment and resources for all of the film broadcast animation projects. Um, so if you need camera equipment, audio, lighting, anything that will help you out on set on a project, um, this is the place to get it. What I do here at the equipment center, uh, one of it is manage our uh, physical assets with the department. The even bigger part of that is the interaction with the students. Equipment usage at Huntington differs from a lot of other schools in the sense that they actually allow freshmen to get hands-on experience with the equipment that is provided here at the cage. So my job is um, to help people who need to reserve orders, um, I help people check out orders, spaces that are rentable, so Studio A, edit suites, the Foley Pit, scheduling all those. It also teaches students how a real rental house might work, so equipment care, the rental process, it covers all of that, so it's really foundational and important for the students' education too. It's always evolving, it's always improving, it's always growing, which is a reflection of an industry standard. Camera technology is constantly changing. You wait five minutes and there's an upgrade. That's probably the biggest challenge in trying to stay on top of uh, a good camera to student ratio so we can get hands on with everybody. Good, great question. We're able to actually add a little bit more than just checking in and checking out equipment. We oftentimes will actually give advice to students. If they have questions, they, they can be demonstrated to them and they can get extra learning and they can pick up some new skills that they might not be able to in a classroom. It's not just a job. Um, you get to learn all about the film equipment here too. It's kind of a, just a central place where everybody can just come. Anytime we're open. We have all of the gear. Talk to a cage worker. Really learn from day one. And cut. Here in Huntington University's film program, we offer a one-of-a-kind experience. You'll have access to state-of-the-art equipment and the opportunity to gain practical experience on set. But what really sets us apart from other universities? While the films that we make are important to us, we give special attention to how we make them. In our film program, we understand the process behind making a film is just as important as the finished product you see on screen and how we treat one another on set has a big impact, which is why our program is part of the Kinema Commonwealth, a group of filmmakers dedicated to creating an environment of mutual respect that values individual artists over the bottom line. Our goal is to create excellent works of cinematic art and storytelling that both entertain and turn those involved into better people. We hold to three community values that make up the Kinema Manifesto. The first is respect for the individual, in which the time... Welcome back to Platt Arena. I'm Noah Tobias along with Coach Platt himself. And Coach, that's a pretty great win. Honestly, you know, you guys kind of started a little slower than I'm sure what you guys uh, really wanted to. Uh, but you guys came back. You guys had a good end of the first half. Again, struggling a little bit in the second half there at the very beginning. But again, kind of pushed through everything. Uh, and got a win. What's one thing that you know you really saw that you were proud of tonight? That's a very interesting question, Noah. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll, I'll try to be positive. Uh, you know, because we obviously expect more out of ourselves in this, and and uh, 
you know, we had moments during the game where we were good, but then we had a lot of moments where we were not. We are hanging on to the ball too much, or we're, causing, we're turning the ball over. We're not taking uh, an attention to detail like we need to on a defensive end. You can't give up 103 points. Um, we know we can score, but you got to stop people. And they really shot well. This is not a bad right State Lake team. It really isn't. I mean, I think in the years past, maybe they've struggled a lot. I know they have. But this, they got some players on their team now, and they were playing loose. What do they got to lose? I mean, you know, they ex are expected to get beat. So if that's the case, you might as well come out and, and let it fly, and they did, and, and we let them. Uh, we didn't come out with the intensity that we needed. We didn't come out with the focus, all those kinds of things, but not trying to be too negative, but our, we just know we expect more than that from our guys, and, and the guys do too. And so, you know, it's, it's Saturday's another day, and we'll see what happens. Well, at least they weren't like the Chicago Bulls this past weekend, uh, let the Warriors get 93 points in one half. That's definitely a positive. But, you know, Zach Owens, a sophomore, he had worked really hard over the summertime, and he scored 31 points for you tonight. What an impact he's made already so far. Yeah, he really has. He had a great game for us tonight. We're glad he was out there because uh, without him doing his thing there tonight, we, we wouldn't have been successful. Um, you know, uh, Connor got up a good amount of shots, which he needs to do every time, but he wasn't hitting just all of them like he like he can. And then Tyler, you know, was good, but yet was also missing some shots he typically will hit. And uh, so we needed Zach to come up and, and, and step up and have a good game. Caleb Middlesworth's been real solid the last, uh, or for his first two games. He didn't start out real well in the first half, but he was more steady the rest of the game. And our, some of our bench guys did okay as well. We just can't get loose with the basketball where we're uh, trying to be too fancy, one hand this, one hand pass, one hand layup, but instead just get back to fundamental basketball. We gotta play the way Huntington's typically played in the past. That doesn't mean that we can't be aggressive and we can't push the ball and we can't you know, get steals and go to the rim hard and play on emotion, but we've gotta get back to some fundamentals that just weren't there tonight, that hopefully will be there now uh, going forward. But we'll have some good days of practice and see what happens. Yeah, and season is in full swing, Coach, and so you guys have another game here at home this Saturday, and that's going to be versus St. Xavier. You know, have you looked forward uh, to any of their film here yet or really just haven't gotten around to it trying to prepare for this game? Well, what I know about St. X is, is their head coach has won almost 1,000 games, and so, I mean, you know, he's a guy that knows what he's doing. His guys will be well prepared. They play in the Chicago Land Conference. It's a good one. Um, they beat us twice last year. We've had their number in the past, but they had ours last year, so we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, I know this. It, it, it'll be a different type of team, but they're going to come in here and play real hard, too, because, doggone it, everybody's trying to win, and, and we got to get that through our head that you can't just show up, you know, and, and, and you say, well, we're at home and think things will go well. That wasn't the case tonight, as we saw, so we got we got to get better. Yeah, that's some good words, Coach. Thank you so much for joining us here uh, tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, and also another good win for the guys and more improvement to come for sure. All right, thanks, Noah. appreciate you guys. Thank you, Coach. All right, well, now we're going to go over to Ryan Lockhart for the end of game statistics. And thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Noah. To go over some end of the game stats, first of all, scoring leaders. We saw for the Forcers 24 points from Zach Owens. 31, excuse me. He also had seven rebounds go with that. Connor Platt had 24 points, eight rebounds. Saw Tyler Ernst, he had a double double tonight with 20 points and 10 rebounds. And Caleb Middlesworth, the big freshman, had 17 points and eight rebounds. A lot of key guys for the Forcers stepping up from the field. The Forcers shot 53% and 36 from deep. Forcers had 16 turnovers, which was lower than their last game, but still a little bit higher than you'd like. For the Lakers, Antonio McQueen had 13 points and nine rebounds, one shy of that double-double. Had those two key and big blocks as well. 23 points and five assists from Chad Harden. 21 points, five rebounds, and five assists from Elijah Woods as well. And the Forcers able to win this one 112 to 103. That'll be all here and Platt Arena for Noah Tobias and everybody here on the FDN crew. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening on Force Radio 105.5 WQHU.